Mysteries. In nomine invocatoris, si non sanctificatus SKW, de vermis mysteries non absolvo follem legendum fatum et eum versus, tibi magnum innominandum signa stellarum nigarum ept. Um, I never had Latin, so I have no idea what it just said, but I think it, yes. It's not a good thing how to read this. Okay. <laughs> huh. Secret. Take. I think this book is a good party gig. Hey, you wanna see something awesome? Read this book. Whoa. Let's read this book. Juan Luis Jorge, the Bibliotheca Reflections on the Power of the Verb in Certain Texts. Archeos Publications, 1919, Stafford. Translation does not alter the occult power contained within such forbidden texts. The malevolent energy is in no way diminished. The spell must be cast aloud and clearly. In certain languages or little known dialects. <laughs> the reader will understand that in the light of these con valuations. I would be foolhardy to continue quoting from the text I have before me. If spoken aloud in it entirely, it would surely awaken powerful and magnetic forces. I will go further and say that the simple reading of some of the more technical passages describing specific practices is in itself a peerless exercise. The ill-prepared reader can easily fall prey to attacks of demented hysteria, not unlike those described in the cases of individuals said to be possessed by evil spirits. I recommend a study made by Zempf, Urban Grandier and Glodon, and the reports made by the Reverend Richard Price concerning a number of astonishing, to say the least, exorcisms carried out in the parish near Providence. Given what I have written, we must be grateful to the librarians of the British Museum who have never allowed consultation of the work of Al Atif's starting work, the infamous Necronomicon. Copies of that work do exist in spite of the seal of book burning inquisitors. For proof, we need look no further than the British Museum, of course, and the sealed archives of the Miskatonic University in Arkham. Other examples of books whose evil can be unleashed by any thoughtless reader are von Junz von unaussprechlichen Kulten, a German word, von unaussprechlichen Kulten, nice, and the abominable De Vermis Mysteries by Ludwig Prinn, whose sordid death sh should be a lesson to all those tempted by a study of the cult. Oh, this book is actually warning us. A parchment, read. The Sacrificial Dagger, Otto Stern, Lumina Books. The importance placed in ritual sacrifice is constant in religious cult practice. Propitiating the gods is a theme common to many religions. The Old Testament affords many examples. Primitive polytheistic belief systems integrate sacrifice in the rituals as part of the recurrent process of reaffirmation and, naturally enough, group cohesion. The members of the social and religious community come together in an act of purification and atonement. It would be erroneous to imagine the act of human sacrifice, linking priest, a forming and god of Mantezzi stone cults, as anything less than a vital focusing of the group's face. The act also ensures the continuing appeasement of the god, but only if practiced by a recognized officiating priest using the appropriate instrument. Studies made concerning primitive religious groups bear witness to the central role of sacrifice in living ritual. My own work in the field of ethnopsychology brought me into contact with a sorcerer living in the region of Arkham. He introduced me to the White of Steel, linked to a ceremony known as Adoring the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Youngs. Huh? The god being adorned is known as the Vagabond. Ooh. Here the dagger's role, which allows the life breeze to pass from one dimension to another, is essential. The Vagabond is a frightening figure, being able to move where he wants, 
and to kill those who have displeased the goat god for whom he acts as go-between. The goat is clearly a fertility god. The priest, having spoken in vocation, must choose the appropriate dagger for the sacrifice. The knife with the sinusoidal blade that must be dipped seven times on nights when the moon is full in water that has been distilled a hundred times will be laid aside since it would send the vagabond back into his own dimension. See illustration. Important. The priest will also choose a dagger with a curved blade that is more appropriate for slitting of the lamb's throat. This act transfigures the source of a priest and plunks the assembled worshippers into a divine trance. So I need the curvy blade. Uh, curvy blade. Mm, this one. What? Oh, yes, yes. So, Vagabond. Come to me. Ah, it's actually here. Mm. Ha ha! Die. So, I killed the bigger bond. Well, I can actually search this place, but I pick up the oil lamp. And go back to the secret part. Uh, I think I'm done here. Huh. 77 no, this is not. Oh. <coughs> Drop put. Let's examine for reflections of the power of the verb. Okay, I don't need all these books, so let's throw them away. Whoosh. Parchment, wheat. The Book of Yell, Signs of Stone, Eucharistic Rituals of Forbidden Cults, Texts Collated by Monsignor Vache, Legate in the Cuvier of the Vocay Vatican. Numerous devilish cults speak of monstrous creatures called the Old Ones. These supernatural beings are believed to be possessed of powers equivalent to those of the gods of antique religions. Adepts of such a cult refer to forbidden literature in order to cause these frightful entities to appear before them. But a serious student of folk news has not come across the names of Tutulu and Shu Niguras. It must be said that these creatures wield tremendous power and are difficult to control once they have been unleashed into the world. Those who serve he who goes in shadows protects himself with signs of stone carved into the walls of houses or engraved on various objects. For these misguided servants of evil, the best protection appears to be that afforded by the sign of the most ancient gods engraved in Mnar stone, a heavy material said to be disagreeable to touch. The sinful practices of those who fall into such errors can only lead to the darkest of despair and are a mortal danger to the soul. Such monsters are those invoked by these foolhardy individuals, uh, engendered when reason drops its guard. Man is easily tempted into perversion. It is why we must forever remain alert and renounce Satan which is breast we take. His ways are infinite in number. Okay. Top. Important. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Uh, we leave this. A talisman, we need this. The creatures of the night. Put. I have a key I haven't used yet. The sons of the sun. Goodbye. Um, a book. Read. Demonia Particularis Signs and Rituals by Heinrich Kassel, Ring Publications. The ritual of invocation demands that the officiant be poor. We have already described the complex operations to, the, to be followed in order to call those that sleep in superior dimensions. We shall, for the present, limit ourselves to the sign of mutual recognition used amongst the number by depths of the cult of the old ones. The sign also serves as protection when in the presence of a servant of evil. The signs resemble 
a blessing, save that the first and little fingers are both folded beneath the thumb, whilst the second and third fingers are held up. It would appear that this sign has no effect on added of a certain wang with knowledge of our particular secrets contained in the Corpus Demonicus. This is my internet collection. The use of such signs is not without considerable risk to the user during any attempt to call upon those from without. Those from without. Ugh. So. What? So what else do we have? A uh, key to the dental, a light, a revolver, a matchbox, a key, a knife, a knife, a sword, some bullets, a matchbox, a poker. Okay. We uh, leave the oil lamp for now and go into search mode. I didn't pick up the books after I read the book which nearly killed me. <laughs> But now I can actually safely explore this place because the vagabond is gone. Stupid vagabond. Nobody likes you. Oh no, we leave this. Okay, I did pick up all the books, I guess. So, let's see. I had a locked door down below. Which... Yes, we should examine. Go to fight stands. Actually... How many videos? Oh, this is the third one. So we have 15 more minutes. About 15 more minutes. Hello, run. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, we can now enter the lower parts. The problem is, I have no idea how long the lower parts are. If I should actually do a third part. Oh, I still need to find the correct dancing thingy. So we can actually get this key. Huh. Leave. What is up with my. One second, something's coming up here. Du -du -du, okay, repaired. Strange. Um, nothing important. Oh well. Because you need, you need the record to actually move these ghosts, because you need the key. So back out here. Oh look, a cavalry sable. Wow. A record, a book. Okay, I think that's the record we need. There is nothing. Nothing important. Okay. We drop the cavalry saber here and reveal a secret which we won't use yet but I also want into the basement first I think we can use both areas I'm not really sure one might is a bit foggy at this point But first of all, I have to sneak past these ghosts. Oh joy. 